inglelo no winga re di si se ma inglelo pa wo ne si se ma di ka ro chwa ro no lu ji de thet lu nge ri ko po bi yo lok saung bi da phit de this is for the youth more than the adults a sa bai ma ro chwa ro ga di ma u saung bi de winga bi de in the beginning we're going to share with you our word we want to bring the youth to the presence of God. That's why you bring your friends to the service. The adults are already enough with the Burmese service. They don't need English service. This is a very special service only for the youth. It is a very difficult thing to do two services a day. We want to give time to the people who only understands English. And in the next time when there is English service, bring your friends in. Amen. Amen. So, Dini, no, we got you. I want to read um, Psalms 105, 16 and 17. Mm-hmm. Moreover, he called for a famine in the land. He destroyed all the provisions of bread. He sent a man before them, Joseph, who was sold as a slave. I'm praying for you so that you can you'll be able to point out the verse faster. It says in here. No, Dine Asa Ahara Atopa go chopia de Kama. We need to destroy all provision and they sent famine into the land. Ero Chamaru di Loka Gia, Asangamu Kamba Muri, a ching ching chung to Ikea. This world is already faced with famine for too many times. There's so many times our provisions has been cut off. Since they have like famine back in the day, now we have more food, that doesn't mean we won't have it again. Right now, a lot of prophets are uh, prophesying about famine. They are prophesying like disease is worse than COVID is coming. And when it comes, we have to stay back in our homes again. Well, there comes a time where we have to face it again. The word of God already said it. In the end times, we'll be, able, we'll be facing with famine and all these things. Right now, when we go shopping to Sam's Clubs or Walmart or Target or literally anywhere, you won't be able to see the signs of famine. Like so many foods are everywhere. The only thing that's not everywhere is our money. Like even our money will be gone, their food is not gone yet. If we go this time and their product is gone, the next time we go, they will be there again. We think that the famine won't come since we we see all these things. And we heard this uh, two prophets uh, prophesying about this. Like they were prophesying. 
They will prophesy that we're going to face with all these things, famines and the other countries will not know. But our country, Myanmar. They're not able to farm properly. You don't even have to prophesy for the next year. They already know that there will be less food. Our country is one of the most, uh, uh, we have the most rice fields. We don't even have to buy uh, fishes. You can just search for yourself and eat it. It is not a country where you have to go to Walmart. You can just farm in your house and then you can just eat it from there. Back in Luego when we were staying there, we don't have to go to market. We've uh, planted, all for, uh, planted all at the back of our house. And then after we're gone in the, our backyard, we go and steal from other person's backyard. We all know that back in villages in Myanmar, no one's angry that people are getting from their place. They're so happy that people are eating from their uh, backyard. We've never thought that we'll be able to face with this famine when we live there. We know how to farm. We know how to produce. We know how to cook. Everything is fine. But the word of God that God has already said will come true. The prophets are instructing us to learn about agriculture or learning how to farm or learn how to plant things. All those things will be arriving soon. But in here it says, Joseph, who was sold as a slave, was sent before them. The Bible didn't say that Joseph was a billionaire or a person who was educated. He's not even a refugee like us. He was a slave. His, his name is already in there. You know, there's a name in front like Apostle Zol, a prophet this. No. Look at Joseph. His name is a slave. Right now we're being here. We're ten times more better than Joseph's situation. The person who was sent to save us from all this famine should be a graduate of Harvard. He should have two Nobel Prizes. Amen. Amen. His name is not even good. He's a Joseph who was sold as a slave. There is no name that is lower than that. Even a beggar is more free. A slave has to be sold. It is even lower than a beggar. There is no name that is lower than this. God sent this Joseph to save from this famine. Hallelujah. We can be people who are sent for this too. Yeah, sometimes our names are better. Amen. Amen. And we still have our names. No. We still have our uh, surnames. Hallelujah. Amen. If you think about it, it is a hopeless name. But 
What kind of person do we need to hope for a person that is going to save us from this famine? We need to hope better hope for better, a person better than this. Of course, people will hope for a better person than this. Amen. Amen. Rich people. People who are educated. A very good leadership. We need to expect for those kind of things. But the person that God sent was a person who was sold as a slave. They don't even call Joseph as a son who is so loved by his father that has a colorful robe. The person that was sent by God to save this family from the whole earth is sold as a slave. The most important thing is not how this family is so big. It is, a, it is important to see who God sent. Hallelujah. Amen. In Romans 8 verse 19. It says in here, for I consider that the sufferings of this present time are not worthy to be compared with the glory which shall be revealed in us. What is this world expecting? In verse 19, it said it is waiting, waiting for the revealing of the sons of God. Hallelujah. Amen. It, it is saying the sons of God. It is in plural. It's not talking about one person. It talks about sons. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Everyone's talking about Jesus. There's going to be a salvation. There's a person who's going to save us. He's going to make the poor people happy. He's going to heal the sick. He's going to save the world from sin. That Savior has already come. But now the person that the world is waiting for, they are the sons of God. They are waiting for people who are going to send as the sons of God. Who is the sons of God? We've never seen the sons of God before. We've never heard about them before. We've never seen anyone from uh, Genesis. We've, they've never heard of it. They only know the Messiah is going to come. Not everyone knows that God's going to send his only son on this earth. Amen. 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 And when Jesus was revealed to the world, he, he did everything by himself. He saved the whole world by himself. The famine that the whole world had to face was only said by God, one person only. God's not only going to send one person in his He's going to send his sons. Now the world is waiting for those sons of God to appear. Hallelujah. Amen. We're not the ones who are waiting. The world is waiting. But we're waiting. Oh, who's going to save me? Who's going to help me? Who's going to compliment me? Who's going to praise me? Who's going to come, uh, bring me? There was no one who brought Jesus to his work. There was no one who helped Joseph in his work. When Joseph was saying another person is out there, no one was him. There's only people who are going to uh, destroy him. Amen. Amen. 
Are you the one who's waiting or are you the one who's sent for? In the Bible, it says God so loved the world that He gave Him one and only Son. That's why the meaning of the Son of God is to be sent for. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. We're not talking about any other things that when we're talking about sons of God. We're supposed to help people. We're supposed to bless people. We're supposed to save people. We're sent for those things. We are sent for those things. Which way are we living in this earth? Who's going to come save me? Who's going to come help me? Who's going to give me tithe? Who's going to help me with my business? If you're just going to wait like that, you won't happen anything. The sons of God are sent for something great. Hallelujah. Amen. When God created Adam, he said, have dominion over this earth. For the God sent his sons on this earth so that they could have dominion over this earth so they could multiply on this earth. You need to know that you are a person sent from God. Why? Because you are a son of God. Let's say I am a son of God. The meaning of the son of God is to be sent for. Why? Because he, he sent his only son on this earth. The reason why Jesus the reason why Jesus was standing was because he's the son of God. When Jesus stood on this earth, he didn't ask help from anyone. Who's going to help me? Well, the Pharisees should try to attack me. Who's going to talk bad about me? Who's going to talk good about me? Who's going to praise me? He's not fighting for those things. The person who was sent for those things, do not fight anything on this earth. He does not expect good things from this earth. He does what he has to do. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. The reason why God sent us to this earth so that we could have dominion and we could have victory over this earth. Even Joseph, who has the worst name, he became the highest of the highest in his country. Why? Because he himself knows that he's sent for this. He's not a normal person living in the world. He is the son of God. He was sent for this thing. He understood that himself. When people think badly of him, when his brother sold him for a slave, he didn't go and uh, go drink alcohol. He didn't go to uh, go into prostitutions. He doesn't do those things. Why? Because he knows. I am a person sent for this. Hallelujah. Amen. His name may not be good. It doesn't matter why you're in this country. It doesn't matter which name you come in this country. You are set for this country. You need to know that. Before you, until you understood that you will still be this pity, pitiful person. Joseph didn't cry for anyone. 
He didn't go cry to Potiphar and say, "Oh, my life is so sad." My own biological brother sold me. My life is not like this. When I was in my father's house, I was one of the one of his favorites. He didn't go talk about those things. He knows that even though he was sold, to this, he may be a slave, but he was set for it. Where can we see this? We can see in Genesis chapter forty-five, verse five. Genesis chapter He said to his brothers, But now do not therefore be grieved or angry with yourselves because you sold me here, for God sent me before you to preserve life. Joseph understood this the whole time. I am not here to be troubled. I am not here to be pitied. Amen. Amen. I am here to rule over them. He said in here, God sent me before you to preserve life. We think that we're going to fail under credit. We think that we're going to go after debt, after debt. We think that we're not able to going to be able to free from this life. Why am I this kind of people? Why am I chin? Why am I chin? I should have been a foreigner. No. You being this is you God sending you into this. Hallelujah. Amen. Joseph understood this the whole time. He knows that he has to do something for that God sent him for. Amen. Amen. The, when he saw his brothers, he was not crying. He said, Joseph was not the one who said to his brothers who bullied him and who sold him as a slave. He didn't go and say to him, I will have a big grudge on you. But the people who bullied him when they saw Joseph, they were scared. We will be killed. We, we're in a big trouble. They are the ones who scared. But Joseph was not. Do not be afraid. Do not uh, feel bad. Just Chill, I'll help you. I am the one who sent to help you. Are you are the one who sent for help people. Amen. You are sent to bless people. Because you know this God, that God will make you this, this person. You are sent to bless people. You are sent to bless people. The reason why God makes you a son of God is so that you can help people and so you can bless people. God brought you from a pitiful life to the Son of God with Jesus Christ. So that he changed your life from being pitiful into great. You don't have to be pitiful anymore. Hallelujah. Amen. You are a son of God. Amen. Amen. You are now sent to this earth to be a blessing to people. Right now, you have so much debt going on in your credit card. Right now, your jobs may not look impressive. But God, whatever happening to you, God sent you here so that you could be a blessing to the people. Amen. Amen. God will make you a blessing at your school, at your work, wherever you are. God will bless them through you. Because of Joseph, Potiphar was blessed. Potiphar is an unbeliever. Potiphar is an he doesn't know God. But there's no matter. 
Because Joseph was in his house, part of God's blessings. The word of God wrote that. Because you were there. You will be a blessing to your job. You need to start changing your mindset that way. Oh, when are they going to fire me? No. They don't have that authority. They don't have the authority to make you whatever they want. God gave you the authority to do whatever you want to them. Hallelujah. Amen. God said to Jeremiah. Don't say that you're young. Whatever you are, you may be young. Let's just say you're young and disabled. No, no, you pecha, maulan, pucha, pesia, de aque. Aya, along a meal, pinabida. I have given you the authority to destroy and to overturn this. Me, machai, de a ping, no black. You can take out the tree that you don't like. Me, machai, de the dying of pucha black. You can break down the walls that you don't like. Me, to a kekere, yadiko, peto black. You can destroy the things that you don't like. Hallelujah. Amen. To know the idea, queen, yad, don't do the people that have the authority, like, but you know, let's see, look, can yad, don't do the people. Like those things. We're not the people who are hopeless. You can change the situations that you don't like. God has given you that. Why? Because you are a son of God. Hallelujah. Amen. Why do you need to be pitiful? If you don't like the situation, then change it. Hallelujah. Amen. God always changes the situations that he doesn't like. Oh, even if there is a storm, he doesn't like it. Be still. That is the authority of God, son of God. Oh, when we are in the storm, Lord, please don't let it destroy us so many other things. The situations are the things that you need to change. Those situations are waiting for you to give them command. Those dead are waiting for you to command them. Until you're still um, crying over it. And since you're growing old because you're having all these things, the more the devil is happy for you. Hallelujah. Amen. The situations are waiting for you to change them. Your dad is waiting for you to change them. Oh, when is my dad going to go? Next 10 years. Next 30 years. Do not put that in your mind. I don't like the situation right now. I really like this prophet angel says about this. The football um, is going to the football is um, happening that evening. Yeah, they're doing this that evening. He already prophesied that morning. They're gonna win with three two. Uh, they're they're going to score a goal. Since I don't like it, I'm gonna not let them go. So it's going to end with 3-2. And just like he said, it ends the, way, the same way. Amen. Amen. It happens as he said. Yeah, you are on, you're going to watch the game this evening. But I already watched it yesterday. Hallelujah. Amen. You may think it doesn't have to do anything with spiritual life. Why is this man of God not focusing on God and focusing on the football game? The God's uh, sons of God can change any situation, not even the football game. The world is waiting for that kind of sons of God. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. You need to know that. Your debt, your job, they're waiting for you to change them. Since you're not doing anything, they do something. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. God already gave Adam the dominion. He already said it to him. But when he came to the devil, Oh, the devil say, oh, you happen like this, like that. 
The devil tried to change the atmosphere that God gave them. Oh, you're going to be like God, like this, like that. He is not interested in changing that situation. He accepted what the devil said. He doesn't know that he's already in that situation before the devil even has to come tell him. He went into the trap himself. The, the situation that he's in is much more better than what the situation that will say. saying. He's not supposed to accept those things. I am a person that has a relationship with God. Every single day, God has to come down just to meet me. Every single day, he has to come meet me. God cannot stay without meeting with Adam and Eve. Every single day, he comes down to me. Every evening, he has to come down to meet Adam and Eve. How great his situation is he in? He's saying, oh, you'll be like God. He is already like him. He's a person that God has to come meet every single day. Hallelujah. Amen. He doesn't understand his situation. He only accepted what the devil said. He doesn't know what he is in. Oh, I want to be like that. And then he stays. If a person comes to say to me, Come and be a minister of, in my ministry. I will let you lead many churches. I will give you many disciples. I'll give you many, many salaries. I'll give you houses for free. I'll give you cars for free. But come and be a minister in my ministry. Will I be happy if a person comes and say that to me? I already have a thing that is better than that. That situation is even way more than where I am right now. I will only get what he gives. If you only give me one house, I only get one house. If you only give me one car, I only get one car. If you only give me 12 disciples, I only have 12 disciples. Come and be a minister in my ministry. If you only give me five churches, I only have five churches. If you only give me five churches, I only have five churches. If you only give me five churches, I only have five churches. If you only give me five churches, I only have five churches. If you only give me five churches, I only have five churches. If you only give me five churches, I only have five churches. If you only give me five churches, I only have five churches. If you only give me five churches, I only have five churches. If you only give me five churches, I only have five churches. If you only give me five churches, I only have five churches. If you only give me five churches, I only have five churches. If you only give me five churches, I only have five churches. If you only give me five churches, I only have five churches. If you only give me five churches, I only have five churches. If you only give me five churches, I only have five churches. If you only give me five churches, I only have five churches. If you only give me five Right now, the devil is calling Adam to get down. But Adam doesn't know his situation. Joyfully, I would go to my husband and say, Oh, this English pastor is calling us to come and serve in his ministry, and then he's going to give me a car and uh, churches and stuff. But that person is like a snake on the tree. We don't have to go under him. Our situation is much more better than what they're offering. This is not news for, for my husband. Are you crazy? I know for sure that my husband's going to say that. I know he's always saying that anyways. Are you crazy? Don't you know that our situation is much more better than what they're offering? We need to not be crazy in our Hallelujah. Amen. It says in Genesis chapter 45. ကျွန်းစီချင်းကလည်းကောင်းကျွန်းစီချင်းကလည်းကောင်းတင်တို့ရှိမှာအကျွန်တော်ကိုစေလွတ်တော်မူပြီး it, it says in here, seven. 
Oh. It says in verse 7, and God sent me before you to preserve a prosperity for you in the earth and to save your lives by a great deliverance. This is so much better than what he's saying. For he, for you to not die, God sent me here. For you to live right now, God sent me. Amen. Amen. We're sent so that people may live. If Joseph do not know himself, if he doesn't understand that he's sent by God, oh, they're the people that wronged me. Where am I going to bury these 11 brothers? Have you, you know, have you marked your own grave? Which knife do you like? Do you like this blade? Do you like this sword? I will immediately do it for you. God does not put you on this earth for those revenge. We're not living so that we can revenge people who wronged us. So we are here so that we live with all those people's goodness. Why are the people who said bad things about me are not dying? But right now, I understand. They cannot die yet. One day they will come to our church. Oh, we're changed because of you. We're blessed because of you. Our life is a life where you They will have to come say those things to us. We have to show love to those kind of people. And we have to show love to those kind of people. Joseph was there to just preserve their prosperity. Amen. Well, I will still pray for those people who are I will still give Amen. We're standing like this. We're not saying bad things towards them again. We're not here to revenge them. We're not here to put a grudge towards them. We're here to do what God says. Hallelujah. Amen. That's why people who are sent from God, they don't care about what people say about them. Joseph is not living with grudges in his life. He does what he has to do. Hallelujah. Amen. When he got his authority, he doesn't go kill Potiphar's wife. He doesn't go kill the cupbearer who forgot about him. He forgave everyone. And in the end, he doesn't even kill his own brothers who sold him as a slave. He said, so that I could save your lives and deliver you from these things. God sent me. If you want to be above and if you want to be in front of all the people, you cannot put grudges for them. You cannot just sit and say off all the things that they've done to you. If you want to be in front of all those people, you need to forgive. Hallelujah. Amen. God sent Moses. Before Moses knew that he was sent from God, he does everything he wants to do. He killed the person. He killed with a good heart. But God does not ask him to do that. Amen. Amen. God, God does not ask us to do bad things. He does not ask us to kill them back or revenge on them. He does all those things by himself. Amen. When they were going, when they were going across the Red Sea, he, had, he let his people walk through properly and they killed all those other soldiers. 
Before Moses understood that God sent him, he did everything with his own mind. In the end, he was so depressed that he became a shepherd. He had to uh, be a shepherd for his father-in-law's sheep. It's not even his own job. That's his father-in-law's job. And then God says to him, one day God called him from a burning bush and said, Go, go and help my people. Say to the Pharaoh, Let my people go. But Moses says to God, Yeah, I'm going to go because you sent me to go, but I don't know how to do anything. Who am I to go and say those things to Pharaoh? Right now he's a shepherd in the wilderness. Right now he has to go before the Pharaoh. He does not understand that he was set from God in the, in the palace. I want to tell you a meaning of this word. The person that is sent for. A person that is sent to do something has to do everything the person that is sent him to do. For example, if an America sent someone to uh, Myanmar, he cannot do whatever he wants to do and eat whatever he wants to eat. He needs to do what this country is asking him to do. Only then he finishes his job. He cannot do more than what he's doing. He cannot do less than what he's supposed to do. A person that is sent from God has to do what God says exactly. God says to Jeremiah, I sent you. Say what I say. Go what I say to God. When I say do it, do it. How do we become people who does, uh, who become a person that is set for? We just have to listen to what God says and does it exactly. You need to know yourself that you are sent from God. You are sent from God. You're not someone who has to do whatever you want to do. God has planned everything that you have to do. Moses doesn't know of this. He does whatever he does. He doesn't understand why God made him a son of the princess. He doesn't know what to do. He has authority. He has things. But he doesn't know how to do it. We're the same ways. We have our children. We don't know how to do it. These children are ch uh, children from God that are supposed to help you. YouTube I, I, yesterday I went to sleep but I was watching this YouTube video and I slept at 1 a.m. I was watching this about, about like uh, this person. It's not a you know movie. It's from YouTube. This man has five sons. This, this isn't an actual happening. This is not a story. He's a person who sent all of his five sons to five different countries in Europe and that he controlled those five countries from his house. 
He understood why God gave him five sons. He understood that those five sons became arrows for his enemy. A lot of, um, there is this emblem in uh, Europe where this bird is holding these five arrows. Uh, since I didn't have a, you know, say, uh, I didn't have, I wasn't planning to say this, but, uh, but, you know, I said it, I don't have pictures. He's a Jew in Germany. From this life where he was living in the slums, he taught his sons and then he changed his life. They don't do anything. They only do business. They do banks. No. They do imports and imp exports of uh, products. And this was before World War I. So he was controlling kings of some of the Europe countries. He was controlling the leaders. He was giving loans to the government. They're holding all the bonds that the um, government gave them. They're, this is something that the bank has to give. So they, since the bank bought all of these things, they have authority over the kings. They're not just rich. They also have power. They have that dominion power. They have this prosperity and power in their hands. They don't have to be kings. They don't have to be president over a country. Even right now, a lot of people believe they believe that there is a um, you know uh, there is a group of people that controls all the governments in the world they believe that there are three families that are holding them the two families are from US if, they, if, we, if I say it, I don't think you will ever heard of them. They have hold over all of Europe. They have hold over all of Europe. This is not for nothing. A person that taught his five sons to go into business and then do all these things. This became a weapon for him to control all of Europe. Until now, people are believing that there are people who are controlling the gov governments of the world. The five sons that God gave it to him, he taught them at home. He himself taught them. He taught his five sons one language each so that they could speak fluently to the countries that he was going to send. He's the person that sells and buys money. He's not free. But he does not just let his children say like that. He taught everything that they need to be taught. There's no proper school back then. 
Amen. He taught them at home. However busy the parents are, you need to teach your children. Sometimes when I look at families, some children do not even respect prayers. We need to teach them that whatever law there is, you need to be quiet, you need to be respectful when we're praying. We need to tell them that church is a place of respect. You need to teach them to stay quiet when there is a worship going on. You need to tell them to uh, teach them to respect the word of God. Parents have that responsibility. We need to understand what God has given us. The word of God says. Your children are arrows that you can shoot to your enemies. There's so many parents that are throwing these arrows away. All those who wrote that their children are going are like dumped. Some people are in the world. We need to teach them with God. They are the people that are going to attack the enemy. When this man taught his children, his children become leaders of these businesses. Every single time they do a new business, it was this family that does it. It feels like they have uh, prophecy. Everything that's going to happen next week, next month, they, they're doing it right now. There are secrets to be able to do this. Things. His father taught them. Because the father taught them, all of his five children were able to do those things. There's no secret in there. There is no combining with um, It's not that because they have prof the prophecy. What I explained to you from the beginning to the end, it was like long. The father taught them the way. For the things to happen next month, they're, since they're starting to do it this month, they're always ruling over this business world. In the end, the government has to wait and do whatever they're doing. Because they know how to do it first. At that time, they don't have internet, they don't have communication devices yet. There's the technique that they do, they use. No. If you are free, you can learn about that. It is a, it's called Rothschild. Rothschild family. You can search about Rothschild family. His uh, children, his technique of teaching his children made them become number one in business. World. Not even all the countries can follow them. They're the ones who put the kings in their pockets. Hallelujah. Amen. We need to understand the things that God has given to us. Don't think that your children are too young to be taught. You need to teach them. Amen. 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 I only have a son and a daughter, but I taught them to be respectful to God. They can play however they want at the church. But in the church, we're always smiling. But the moment they get back home, they got beaten up. We always ask them to sit in the front. I always tell them to respect towards the presence of God. They may not be very impressive in it, but they are always respectful towards it. My mother was the same way. Even before my youngest um, uh, sister was able to speak, we were praying just with this family. 
We cannot slump when we're praying. We cannot stand up when we're praying. When we kneel down, we cannot put our uh, uh, bottoms on our knees. We need to be always straight. We need to stay like this for three hours. It feels like a punishment. Since my younger sister was like a bit tired doing that, she a bit uh, she slumped down a bit. She was yawning. She was scratching her head. She was picking her nose. She, my mom didn't say anything to her. Amen. But the moment we say amen. We have this long stick. Yeah, she goes met with that faith. I always feel pity for my sister. She was, she was so young and yet she was beaten up. If it was my heart, I didn't want her to beat her. Up. But my mom did. You cannot fall asleep. You cannot be silent. When you're praying, you have to pray out loud. That's why I don't feel bad that I'm like loud. This, this is something that my mom taught me. I do not like to do something very quietly when it comes to God. I, I may be loud, so that's why I, I put my microphone even closer. Some people are like, oh, God is good. You're not gossiping. Why are you putting your microphone? You need to say, God is good. When you're gossiping, your voice goes, We're not gossiping about someone. We're declaring that God is good. Even if we got, we got wrong, we'll be shouting of it. When I first go into the Bible school, it is only 40 days. I was the only girl in the whole Bible school. There were 11 boys. So we only have 12 in the Yeah, only one woman came. That was me. Uh, she was like very old. She, she got back out like after a while. I was the only woman. When pastors came to preach, I was very shy. If I talk, you cannot hear from me. But when I preach, since my mom taught me what to say, I have to say it louder. Whatever, even if I'm wrong, I say it out loud. He said, <laughs> he said, oh, you're wrong, but like, it's good that you're a girl, but you're wrong all the time, though. I really like it, though. I'm not ashamed of it. Don't we have to shout for God? My mom taught me what to say. I will shout whatever it is. Amen. Amen. We need to understand what God has given us. You need to teach your children before they, they are of age. I, th that is not a punishment. This is called teaching. Hallelujah. Amen. 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 There is one thing that God asked the Israelites to do. He said that is the most important thing in your life. Whether you have time or not, teach your children. Whether you are on a trip or you're on a trip, teach your children. Don't even uh, don't only think about uh, asking for prayers for your children. Uh, the parents like to ask for prayers. You need to teach them. You need to teach them directly. Don't, don't feel bad about asking them to pray for you. Don't I think that uh, it's fine no one pray for you. you need to teach them to fear the Lord. Hallelujah. Amen. God asked only two things of people. You need to love one another. You need to fear the Lord. Love one another and love God. 
And then fear the Lord. He asks us all of those things. That's why to your children, you may not be able to teach them other stuff. But you need to teach them to love one another. You need to teach them how to love one another. You need to teach them to fear the Lord. And then that's enough. You may be able to teach them in English. You may be able to teach them five languages like that. But you need to teach them how to fear the Lord. You need to teach them how to love one another. And that family taught his sons how to love one another. And that family taught his and that family taught his sons how to love one another. God asked us to only teach those things. They love one another. They love their neighbors. They have a lot of their money when Israel become a country. Amen. Amen. That's why we need to understand what God gave us in an army. You're a person that is sent from God. Whether you have time or not, you need to teach what your father sent you for. Only then you will have dominion over this earth. It will flow out of you. You will be able to overrule people. You will be able to help people. You will be a blessing to people. Nothing will happen if you stay like this. To the person next to you, you won't happen anything if you stay like this. Hallelujah. Amen. When Moses understood God sent him, he only said what God said. In what God says, I sent you to them. I am with you. Say what I say. If we're not living our life as a person who's sent from God, then you will only end your life as a person who is waiting for help. You will only end your life with only hope that is asking for people for help. Are you going to be a person who gets the help or are you going to be the person that helps? You can choose that. I have so many things to say about this. I want to take at least this. You need to be a person who wants to be sent from God. Amen. Amen. And all, did there's so many God sent you for things that are great we're still waiting for people to come help us you're a person that's going to change situations hallelujah amen God said uh, in Isaiah, it says in here, there was this heavenly meeting that was happening in heaven. Who should we send? Who should we send for us? And when Isaiah heard that, he said, send me. When he says, send me, he cannot live what he wants to live. That's why God says to Isaiah, you have to go. Close your eyes on people that you don't want to see. Open the eyes for people who want to see. I will give you that authority. Hallelujah. Amen. Isaiah lived with that authority. We need to be a person that wants to be set Set me, Lord. I don't want to live in this life anymore. I have to worry for my livelihood. I have to worry for my future. I have to worry for my future. I don't worry for my work. I don't want to worry for those anything. I want to be a person that is sent from you, Lord. I don't want to live in an ordinary life. I don't want to end it in an ordinary life. I want to be a person that is sent from you. Hallelujah. Amen. Let us all have the heart of Isaiah. Only then a God starts to use Isaiah. He does. He does not say what he wants to say. He does not do what he wants to do. He does what God says. 
ตาตะมีเดโกพะยะบาเปาะไข่แลเปาะเดเดซิเอ็ดเจอเดวะกาแอสเซมซาตะมีเดโกพะยะกาอะเฉยชีดิพิเศษไม่ชีดิพิเศ
Eri atat amio ko cuma rotu ayah. We need to go into that life. Cuma rotu dini peyar ke silo kane atat tarima atat mesin apa umiare. We live in a life where we ask people. Kopi tanah ne kopi sah ne kuah kobe kau muka le lai ni. We're always busy and dizzy with our own work and problems. Eng eng bina malu ne la mene la orang teri matamu. We don't care if there are neighbors around us. Any boy that got twelve lakh and then alone not she ya. You need to have a heart to get out of that life. Say look cano tu pichin ya. You want you need to want to be a person. Say look cano tu atat tamio ma atat shinchin no tu lepi ya. Let us become people who wants to be set free. Eri atat taga ayen chinchin ma bo. That life may be so strange. Eri atat taga ayen malu malu pichin ma bo. Oh, we will be free in that life. Malu lau chinam malu ya ro mule. We will be able to do whatever we want. Eri chinchin te. That is very restricting. Okay, te ha me ra elu boa go te nyim pere so ino. Sure, if you're denying of that life, your life will stay in the place where you're asking You are going to only wait for the people who are going to help you. Okay, continue wait for it. I am not going to wait for those. I will go. Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Who wants to become a person who that's Who wants to become a person that's Who wants to become a person that's from God? Who wants to become a person that's sent from God? We need to go into that life. We need to go into that life. Amen. Amen. Ne alone ne mita sune the cha ya ke sari ne be chumaro eni ma be ayo sai ni na mo be ne. Let us not only focus on our work and our life and our families. Kya rakhe chuma be ma tua amle. Where should I go, Lord? Ma lo amle. What should I do? Ma ri pio ya amle. What should I say? Dine chumaro elu mio pe ya ko pia mi me ta de se lo kanoto de pia. We need to ask God of those things. Hallelujah. Amen. Pio ya un chuno wa se lo kanoto de. Let's say I am a person sent from God. Pia pio ra ko pio ya me. Paya lo da go lo ya me. Hallelujah. Kenal amat ya bicara nusakaya. 